going to be a meeting in the air, and I hope that you're there. G. It's good to be in God's house this morning. We're going to start our Sunday school hour. There's going to be a meeting in the air. And there's going to be a meeting.
Brother Ardy, can you open us up this morning? Amen. Hey, brothers. What's going on here? Test. Something's different about the church I pastor. Oh. Good morning, everybody. I want to welcome you out to our adult uh, Bible class. I'm looking for the I'm looking for the groom and the bride. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm sure they'll show up. Uh, welcome to our adult Bible class. We're going to have a great time today. We've uh, readjusted the furniture a little bit for the wedding and uh, trusting God's grace and blessing. I wonder if somebody uh, could uh, uh, help me out. What was the first uh, miracle that Jesus Christ publicly ever uh, performed. Anyone know Steve? Changing the water into wine at a wedding in Cana. Okay, and so obviously I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm drawing on that for a reason. So let's turn. Let's just turn uh, to John chapter two, and this has uh, a direct impact as well on our ongoing Sunday school lesson about uh, future finances. I'll be winding up today and um, want to uh, kind of close it off, put the bookend on, on this side of our study on the blessing of delayed gratification, the blessing of delayed gratification. And so um, it just kind of dovetails together though in John chapter 2 if I could get uh, somebody to help me out read verses 1 through verse uh, 4 who'd who'd read that for me 1 through verse 4 Joseph and then I'm going to ask for somebody to read verse 5 through verse 8 5 through verse 8 who'd read that for me verse uh, chapter 2 John 2 verse 5 through 8 Okay, best Brother Artie, and uh, go ahead, uh, Joseph, go ahead. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. The mother of Jesus was there. Both he and his son and disciples were invited to the wedding, and when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. He said to her, what does, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Okay, uh, so... Obviously, the setting is in Cana. Uh, this is uh, Jesus' uh, hometown, uh, Cana of Galilee. And uh, uh, there's a wedding. The fact is, is that Mary has been invited, so hasn't Jesus. Uh, also, his disciples were invited along. The fact that uh, Mary has taken a, a direct role in the uh, in the provisions of the, <clears throat> the wedding beverage would have us to understand that uh, she's playing more than just simply a spectator's part. She's, uh, she is um, uh, undoubtedly, or very, very likely, let's put it that way, very likely uh, she's actively involved in the preparations. And we're, uh, we're presently having a wedding uh, yesterday, there was a, some preparations that went on. There's been some showers, so forth. Uh, today, there's preparations. And so uh, a big part of a wedding, uh, anyone that's been involved, especially recently, you know there's a lot of preparations that go on. And so uh, in our society, we, uh, we are not uh, as traditional bound, you could say, or ceremonial bound as as they were back then. What, does anyone have an idea, what might be the, uh, the, the, the upshot or the, or the, the what, would, what would be the outcome of, um, of them running out of wine at the wedding? What, what might be some of the fallout of that? Anyone have any idea? It's a big, uh, it's a big event. It's a one, 
uh, in the Jewish faith, you're married, you're, you know, you're, you're the idea, the ideal is you marry for life. So we could say that coming to this event, they're planning on, it's a one-off, they're going to they're gonna be married for life. And so here, <clears throat> the, um, uh, the, the day has come, the big day has come, the people are socializing uh, at, the, um, at the reception, you could say. And they've run out of wine. What what might be some of the the, the kickback on on that? Anyone have an idea? Uh, Nick. Just that they were not prepared. Okay, so that might uh, speak that the uh, people didn't prepare. Um, just just going to tell you that uh, in, even in today's times, uh, people count noses. They count. You know, they they have uh, placemats or place cards or holders for uh, their guests. And it's, it's, it's a, in other words, it's a big deal. The point is, it's a big deal. And so to run out of wine, what might that speak, uh, Michelle Rawlings? Anyway, sorry, peace out. I'm, I'm decoding as you go. Uh, you got to remember, I'm 69 years old. Peace out. I, I think that means uh, we're out of here or something. Or, okay, I got it. <laughs> Why is it the older people know? <laughs> uh, peace out, everybody. Uh, <laughs> what am I doing? I'm supposed to be the grandfather of the groom. I mean, of the bride. I should be, I should be, I should be relaxing. Why am I working? Uh, all right, peace out. We got that far. And then go ahead, uh, Michelle. Right? Okay. And again, I like, I think of it as also the spiritual side of it is the wine representing the testimony, the spring of life. Since there's a lot of what's happened and you know, there's a lot of different plates to think about it, is that I always think of this wine as, I don't know, maybe she could speak to me, wine is the, the joy, the Holy Ghost. Right. The joy of Okay. Life. Okay, but let's restrict from, let, let's restrict, uh, what kind of wine you serving after service, brother? Uh, uh, let, let's see, uh, let's restrict it to the, to the uh, reality of two sets of relatives, representative in the groom and the bride. Uh, they're, they're coming together and uh, possibly they know each other, Possibly they're, you know, in the same city, maybe. Possibly not. Uh, but the, the point is, is that when you have relatives uh, coming from two different, uh, two different uh, families, um, it can be, it can have, there can be some tension. There can be, uh, you're first getting to meet people. Uh, anyway, the point is, is to run out. Uh, what else might happen? I think, Kim, you had a, a hand. Go ahead. Thanks for thanks for your input uh, over here. Go, go ahead. What? Uh, maybe like running out of wine. Maybe like because they didn't have enough wine. Maybe they were worried that the wine would run out. Ah, so yeah, people are pretty superstitious, even if they say they're not. Uh, some things can be uh, uh, picked up on. Oh, yeah, we should have known. We should have known. Just uh, look what look what uh, look what look what happened on that day. And so you, you, got, you kind of, you're tapping in, brother, uh, to something that starts to happen. You know, you can talk all you want to talk about. Uh, the, the, we shouldn't think this way. We shouldn't be this way. But human nature is human nature. And it's just uh, people are going to talk. That's the point. People are going to talk. And so it's not the best way, admittedly, to get off to a good start where you're looking for, if ever you're looking for a day where things go right, or ever you're looking for a day where you could interpret that this is a blessed event, you're looking for that, and you're, you're wanting that. And now here comes a, uh, you know, a wrench in the, in the, in the you know, stick in the spokes, 
And, uh, and it wasn't just, oh, you know, uh, somebody run down to the Circle K and, uh, you know, get a couple of, uh, you know, quarts or something. Uh, this is going to be something that, um, um, given human nature, given the way people talk, it, it starts to, it starts to uh, spread. Oh, they have no wine. And so Mary's quick on it, and she's, uh, uh, she's wanting to uh, intervene. I think Michelle had a stop. I married her. <laughs> Just what you see is what you get, and so uh, and so uh, it's very embarrassing. And the point is, is that would be a uh, you know sometimes in America we are not as uh, you know sensitive uh, perhaps or, or tuned in as uh, uh, as to how intense things could be. Things can have a social meaning in other cultures. It's very, very, very intense. To us, to us, when we went to the Philippines, for example, it wasn't a big deal. You know, sometimes I'm just flowing in life, and then I would pick up from my Filipino uh, friends, disciples, oh, pastor, uh, so-and-so lost, you know, what's going on? With, I'd say, what's going on with so-and-so? Well, so-and-so lost face. So-and-so lost face. Well, Oh, okay, what you mean they got embarrassed? Yeah, but it's on steroids 10 times. So they won't probably be around for another month uh, until it kind of wears off. And so losing face, and uh, by the way, that was, that was one of the big deals. I'm listening to a book on uh, the World War II and, and uh, Japan's surrender. Uh, Japan was a totally different uh, uh, animal, so to speak, a totally different uh, situation than, than, uh, than uh, uh, Europe. Europe, uh, when it was, was clear that Hitler was done, uh, the Germans began to uh, surrender en masse, uh, and they tried to get over to the American side. They, they had no problem surrendering. In fact, they wanted to surrender to the Americans as opposed to the Soviets. And so, uh, but in, in the reason why we, we dropped the, had to drop the atomic bomb was because if we had to go into the uh, mainland of Japan, uh, we're, we're talking about another maybe five years of the war because they were going to go from you know, house to house, hand to hand. And in their culture, it was an honor to die. Uh, for You don't surrender. And that's why uh, when we had some of our troops surrender in World War II, they were treated so wrong and so, and so shoddily, brut brutally even, because in their culture to surrender is an absolute disgrace. That's why, uh, that's why MacArthur uh, formed the um, uh, hop Hopping Islands, because he'd rather just let, let them starve on those islands than to have them take, it, take them out. And so their, their idea, I think it was Harry, Harry Carey or... Uh, you know, their, their idea was is that it was an honor uh, to die and it was a disgrace, absolute disgrace to you, to your parents, to your nation and to the emperor who they thought was God uh, to, to surrender. So when you understand, oh, that's the mentality. So, okay, that changed the, that changed the equation for Truman uh, to drop the bomb. He didn't want to drop the bomb. He gets a lot of, of, uh, of, of flack about it. But anyway, the point is, is that different cultures have different, uh, you know, nuances and, and, and intensity. To run out of wine very clearly would have started this marriage off to the wrong, on the wrong foot and uh, could have been the subject of, uh, of uh, bad jokes for the rest of their life. Uh, you think that, well, they probably would have got over it. But, you know, after a while, things get old. And if it was the, uh, if it was the wife's uh, fault, uh, you know, maybe the husband could use that later on when he's, if he's disgruntled with her. So, you know what? Ever since I married you, you've, you've messed up. You've, you've screwed up, and, I, and I'm done with you. Uh, that kind of an attitude could have uh, come in. And, and, and so uh, why do you think Mary uh, was might have been uh, hyper about this. She's, she's, she's the one that immediately comes to Jesus. Why do you think Mary uh, was uh, so on it, so to speak, and so quick on the draw to, to, to report the, 
report the uh, shortage. Does anyone have an idea, uh, Brother Caesar? Right, and so that's a good, that's a very good guess. Uh, a lot of commentators believe that Mary uh, was related uh, to uh, to one of the party, and so that's why she would have had such an active role in it and in overseeing the um, you know the the, uh, the provisions. And so, does anybody have an idea what why might Mary uh, all the more be hypersensitive to this? Anyone take a guess, Vitali? Okay, uh, she could have been related. Okay, uh, Michelle? Um, I think she was the type to the roots, but, and I hadn't really thought about the intensity of it, but she had a lot of um, shame the way, yeah, right, the Holy Ghost got you pregnant, yeah, right, as if, and so she had so much shame, even though they both knew it was God, but the people did. All right, so my wife and I uh, discussed this. I didn't, I didn't talk about this in church, I don't think. <clears throat> my wife and I were talking about this at the house. Uh, and so uh, just try to put yourself in Mary's shoes. So all of, ever since the Holy Spirit, the angel came, Gabriel came and told her she's the chosen vessel and that she's going to be um, the one that bears the uh, Messiah. So, okay, so... Then, she, then the prophecy is that she's going to be a virgin and she's going to conceive and bear a son and he's going to be the Holy One of Israel. Okay, that's great. That sounds great. Now, now do the math. Now do the reality uh, gut check. Uh, so how many people believe that? Oh, yeah. Uh, you're, hey, you're showing and you haven't had the wedding with Joseph yet. What, what, what's this all about? Oh, let me tell you, an angel by the name of Gabriel came and... You, all right, so sometimes we don't, we just, we just read it and, you know, 2,000 years removed, which is no big deal. Now, be real, be real. And so, and so you have to give the uh, explanation, and then how many times did you want to hear that again? Could you tell that story again? Uh, oh, and and that, now I want to bring my other relatives. Tell that one again, and, 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 and Joseph's relatives got to know because you did this to Joseph. And don't you know there's people that are on Joseph's side? You did this to our, our, our family. Yeah, you did this to our family, Mary. We don't, yeah, like we believe you, right? And so and say, so, is that really true? Of course it's true. If, 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 if God didn't write in a, a big, you know, he didn't rent a big screen, a jumbotron screen and, and say, hey, everybody, lay off Mary. Uh, she really is uh, innocent. So one, one of the little things is that, wow, you better, you should appreciate Mary. I mean, we're not going to go the Catholic church route, but uh, you ought to, <laughs> I know some ex-Catholics are in here. You <laughs> keep praying that Hail Mary, stop it. And so, uh, and so, uh, but you know what? What a woman. I'm talking about a, a woman that's got backbone that is, uh, she uh, was willing to take on the, uh, uh, okay, Whatever that means to me, so be it. Uh, you know what? If I'm going to be reproached, yes, I am going to be reproached. And so later on, the Jews, as they're, of course, once the Jews began to sniff in about Jesus and the miracles and, and, and his teaching, his growing, uh, especially the miracles, and, and uh, more and more people are, are uh, following Jesus Christ, of course, of course, everybody begins to check in. Who is this Jesus again? Where did he come from? Who are his parents? What is his story? Oh, 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 he supposedly was conceived by a virgin, huh? Oh, yeah, right. And so then they have the innuendos. And later on in the gospel account, uh, they said, when Jesus was talking to him, they said, we be not born of fornication. What do you think the implication of that was? They mouthed off to Jesus. We're not born of fornication. It's like, you are. 
We don't believe that story. And so Mary has had to, all since the time of, of, of bearing Jesus, of, of the whole, uh, you know, story of the, of the, of the uh, incarn incarnation, ever since that time, her life has been on high alert. I am not going to be understood. It doesn't matter what I say. People are people. They're going to think what they think and the little innuendos. And so Joseph, uh, the Bible tells us that he uh, had God come to him and by an angel and said, don't fear to take her. Uh, what's conceived in her is through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, again, uh, he could have walked on that. He said, I, I just can't face that. I cannot face that kind of, of uh, you, know, uh, you know, incriminations or, or attacks or innuendos. So thank God for Joseph. What a man. What a man. He put aside his own uh, interest, his own well-being, so to speak. He defended her, took her undercover, and, uh, and uh, uh, protected her, married her, uh, loved her as, as, as much as we know, was, lived, lived the rest of his life to, uh, uh, as a faithful husband. But Mary, on the other hand, and especially we see this coming through. That's why, you know, think, you don't just read the scripture, speed read. Oh, yeah, I read John chapter 2, and I'd read it in five minutes. Yeah, you can read it in five minutes, but you didn't milk the, you didn't, you didn't think about the, the implications and, the, and the, what's really going on. So Mary, uh, I feel very clearly, she would have been hyper uh, sensitive I don't want this to happen to you. Know, I know what's happened to me. I know what I've had to go through. And, and even, even, it might even be another connection. Oh, Mary's involved in this. You know, it seems everything Mary's involved in, right? You got it, didn't you? Thank you. Rest of you, come on, drink your coffee earlier. And so, uh, and so, so she would have been hyper. And so I think that lends, uh, you know, passion to this this story and and Jesus immediately she knows hey uh, uh, this is gonna this is gonna reflect badly on this couple I can't bear that to happen she hastens to Jesus Jesus they have no wine <clears throat> all right so now we have uh, Jesus's response in verse four woman uh, what have I to do with you my hour is not come and so uh, what does this mean uh, on the face of it? Let's just get real. What does that look like, the answer that Jesus gave to his mother? What, how, does that, how does that strike you, that, that kind of an answer? Say, hey, what's it, you know, all right, let me put it this way. Uh, son, they have no wine. And she's like, they have no wine. And Jesus said, what's that to me? What's that to me? What do you think about that, bro? I don't even talk to my mom since Mary Day like that. I'm a grown man. <laughs> <laughs> I think you and my, your mom and my mom went to the same school. <laughs> so we'd have five, uh, four fingers across. I'd have, I'd be wearing, I'd be wearing some slap marks if, if I talked to my mother that way. To this day, she'd come out of the, if I said that, mom would come out of the grave and get me. So uh, that's pretty that's an intense, again, if you're, not, if you're not really, you know, using your imagination, that's an intense uh, rebuke, no matter how you slice or dice it. That's not the answer uh, that, uh, you know, that uh, you, you would think that he would have given to his mother. So let's, let's unpack that a little bit. So if Mary is his true biological mother, if she cannot come to him and force upon him her will I want you to fix this that's why she's coming to Jesus why else she's coming to Jesus because she knows he's a miracle working uh, person and so and so hey it has to be uh, very likely it's 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 inner family this is connected to our family it's going to reflect very badly on our relative. Our relative possibly is going to be the you know, butt of a joke for the rest of their life. This could even cause a disruption or a dissolution of the relationship, believe it or not. And, um, and so then Jesus uh, absolutely stops her in her tracks and, and says, what a, what's that to me? That's not, no, it's not, my time has not come. 
And so basically he's saying to her, uh, this isn't my scene. I'm not obligated. This is not the way that I am ever going to be invoked to intervene for a miracle. What you need, there's a reason this is the first miracle in the Bible. Are you, are you tuned in? First miracle, first law, first mention means, uh, <clears throat> law, first mention means uh, this is the primary truth. There is a primary nugget of truth that is to be extracted from this text. And, and I would say this, that all subsequent or all following miracles um, relate back to the law of first mention. There is a principle right there about miracles we dare not miss. You will not get a miracle because you just have a need. I'm, you know, in my life and I have a problem and this is hard. Yeah, I know. You know, there's a lot, a lot of problems in the world. God's not working miracles. But, but this has the potential to be a disaster. I know that. And that's very true. There's a lot of very serious, serious problems. And, and so <clears throat> she comes to Jesus. Uh, and, and, but you know what? Uh, I'm your mother. You should help your mother. If there's anybody that should get a miracle, it's your mother. Nope. Wrong way. Not even his mother. Not even. That's why it's his mother that's in this, in this account. To show us not even his mother is going to approach God and, and put a lever under God and force God and have some kind of a, uh, uh, some kind of a lever on God uh, to manipulate God. You will never manipulate God. And people like, some people like, why not? <laughs> some people like, well, that's, that's, that's not good. And uh, there should be, there should be some advantage to having an inside track. There should be, and, and, and on and on and on. And people like, you know, you can tell this again and again, and people will, will not get it, but you need to get it because no doubt you're going to need to, you have to uh, get this because if you want some miracles, you better, you better pay strict, strict attention. So, okay, did I have Artie, did you already read Artie verses? Go ahead, read verse five through verse uh, go ahead and read verse 5 to verse 8. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were set, there are six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing 20 to 30 gallons apiece. And Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. Okay. And so, uh, so, we find that uh, Mary, when she is uh, checked, um, he, 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 he says to her, woman, he doesn't say mommy dearest, he doesn't say dear mom, he, doesn't, he, he just says, look, and when it comes to the approach for a miracle to take place, I'm not, I'm not being moved because there's a need. I'm not being moved because you're my mother or, or on a relational level. I'm not being moved because this is a great crisis. This could have future ramifications. All of that's true, folks. All of that is true. I'm not being moved. What way do we move God? So, so Mary, evidently, and again, this is why if we had the video, I'm sure we would have a whole lot more understanding if we could play the video up there and see it uh, unfold because it's just, we're limited to the two-dimension ink on paper. So, so when, verse four, woman, what have I to do with you? My hour is not yet come. Verse five, his mother said to the servants, whatsoever he says unto you, do it. And so uh, what happened there? There's a major, major shift. Instead of trying to approach Jesus by pressuring Jesus, Instead of trying to claim there's a need on this situation, you should fix it, fix it, Jesus. Like, how many times do you think God is put in the place of being Fido? Hey, Fido. Fetch. Fido, bring the newspaper. Uh, or, or bellhop, bellhop, bring the luggage. Uh, open the door. Uh, Santa Claus, oh, Santa Claus, 
I need something. Would you like go tell your elf, your elves in the North Pole, make, make me a lot, double portion. Between all the different projections on God of, of you know, the candy man, the sugar daddy, uh, abracadabra, all that stuff, doesn't move him. Doesn't, he's not going for it. That's not how, that's not how you trigger uh, a miracle. And so what Mary had a fundamental uh, uh, transformation between verse 4 and verse 5. Jesus says to her, woman, what have I to do with you? There's, there's got to be uh, all kinds of vibes between their eyes. What have I got to do with you? This is not my time. Mom. However, however, the connection, mother, this isn't, this isn't the way this works, mom. You, and you know it. And she did know it. She did know it. She knew it. And, and the reason, reason why is she immediately rectified the whole equation. And she said, ah, I've tried the approach of using uh, the problem, of using emotions, of using uh, problem uh, and relationship. To, to lever him to do it, wrong way. Ah, I get what he's saying. My hour has not come. What is the hour, what, what is it that puts God in the driver's seat and causes his hour to become? Let's not miss this. What, what causes the landscape to completely change and so that um, uh, it does become God's hour? Carl? Obedience, and, and, and what does that imply? When you are obedient to God, that implies that he is what? He is Lord. <laughs> he is Lord. Somebody, can we say it? One, two, three. He is Lord. And so, and the moment, the moment, he just said, my hour has not come. Well, we think of an hour, 60 minutes. My hour has not come. Uh, it's not the time. It's not the place. Uh, it's, not, it's not fitting. It's not going to happen. My hour, she gets it. Oh, wow. I've tried to approach him on the wrong basis of, uh, of all those other things we've already touched on. She, he didn't change. Folks, he didn't change. She changed. She changes, she turns to the servants, whatsoever he says, do it. Bingo, jackpot, you got it. You, 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 got, the right, you got the right formula, all the digits dropped. You won the sweepstakes, I don't care. Whatever it is, you won. Because the moment, the moment you tried to uh, pressure him, fix it, uh, Sugar Daddy, Santa Claus, all the other, not going for it. This is not my scene. I'm not obligated. This is not how I do, that's not how I roll. I don't do it that way. Okay, got it. I, I, made, I messed up on my approach. Uh, let's do a redo, a retry. Servants, whatever he says, do it. Put him as the elevated Lord. <clears throat> Put the ball in his court. It's now, now him the one calling the shots. He's the one that's now in charge because where he's Lord, he's now in charge. He's not, he's not a paid uh, servant. You're not making him a slave. You're not making him uh, uh, your uh, genie in a bottle. All of these different kinds of, of illustrations I'm trying to invoke in your mind that we do to God. We try to do to God. He's never going to be manipulated by that. And so the moment that he is given his um, rightful place, you're not going to get to God unless you give him his rightful place. You acknowledge him as Lord, and then you say to him, Lord, what would you have us to do? And immediately, he's got the answer. He just said, my hour's not come, but it's only five seconds. It didn't take two months. You didn't have to fast until your teeth fell out. You just got him to give you a rhema. <laughs> no, Lord, what would you have me? And so you give him, you give him uh, the driver's seat, and he said, okay, fill those six uh, water buckets uh, over the, those water uh, pots and, uh, and uh, fill that up, and then take, uh, uh, take a sample over to the 
uh, governor of the feast. Um, and when the governor, verse 9, when the ruler of the feast had tasted it, um, uh, when the ruler of the feast had tasted it, um, uh, then the water was made wine. And uh, he didn't know uh, where it came from. The servants knew. And so he calls the, um, he calls the um, uh, bridegroom. And he says um, uh, to the bridegroom, every man at the beginning does set forth good wine. And when the men have well drunk, this is a, p- a practice of the day, uh, they would try to impress. People are tr- always like this. We try to impress. We give our best appearance first. We put our best foot forward. And so then after they've drunk for a bit and their tastes are but somewhat uh, a duller and uh, so forth, uh, then... Uh, then they uh, put forth the lesser wine. And so he said, whoa, this uh, beverage is, is absolutely uh, the best I've ever tasted uh, in so much that he calls the um, bridegroom. So this would tell us that it's very, very, very likely that the bridegroom is somebody related to Mary on Mary's side because of the bridegroom uh, was responsible for that. Okay, so... Uh, uh, is there any comment? We have a few moments. We're going to cut, cut it short so that the wedding party and all the visitors can get in. What, what does that speak to you uh, about, uh, about uh, the miracle, uh, getting a miracle from God? Go ahead, Steve. And, and it's even pretty, it's even pretty sick the way they they uh, uh, picture how Mary goes and, and approaches Jesus. Uh, so anyway, I don't want to uh, get X-rated. So uh, so the whole thing that debunks that Mary is right here, and 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 if that was true, what you just what the Catholics believe, immaculate uh, immaculate conception uh, was it was true. And that all that Mary is co-equal and that she's the queen of heaven. By the way, the queen of heaven is mentioned in, and I believe it's Jeremiah, and it's not in a good light. It's a, it's a demon, uh, a false god. So uh, that's not going to get you grounds with God. So, but then again, Catholics don't know their Bible. So uh, the point that we have here, though, is that um, oftentimes, if I could just uh, summarize, oftentimes in uh, relationship. No accident that God chose a marriage for the to be the uh, to be the site of His first uh, demonstration of public miracle power. He chose that on purpose. There is a, a great encouragement that God puts His stamp of approval. Marriage is not man's idea. Marriage is God's idea. Uh, he wants it known that, that He approves of it. Uh, he was very willing to go to this wedding, uh, his, as he's very willing to go to the wedding this morning, or any wedding that is, uh, as, is, is performed with God, uh, God's will in mind. Uh, what happens, though, is that very quickly people, uh, many times, in spite, in spite of their best uh, uh, efforts, their best laid plans of mice and men, often go awry, so they could pretend, or I mean, uh, try, uh, to put forth their best shot, but often people run out of resources and sometimes breathtakingly soon. I've had times when I married somebody on a Sunday morning and by two in the afternoon, they are calling me pastor. Yes, oh, it's Tim. This guy's name was Tim. And, uh, and uh, the other the, the woman that he married. And, uh, and so, uh, yes, and I'm there. Oh, did you... you you're calling me to thank me for marrying you? No, we're calling you to get counsel. <laughs> you guys got a record. That one's, that one's incredible. And so, um, and so you, but we jest, but it's not, it's not so uh, funny if, it's, if it's, uh, it happens to you. Is that breakdowns happen, shortages happen, we run out of resources. Uh, and then because we're Christians, this is a big mistake. I've seen this countless times 
Why is this happening to us? We're Christians. Don't we have Jesus in our, in our uh, you know, in our family and in our marriage and our situation? You could. Jesus was there. But how is Jesus there? Is he just merely a guest at the wedding? Or is he Lord of the wedding? Everybody would say, oh, yeah, we'd like to have Jesus as an ornament. We'd like to have Jesus as an extra, you know, and it'd be great to have Jesus along. That would be, uh, that'd be wonderful. Yeah, but what if, he, what if he comes into your wedding and says, you know what, uh, I'll come to your wedding, but uh, absolutely no fornicating before marriage. Oh, gee, I, oh, wow. Uh, Jesus said, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll come to your wedding, but uh, you know what, if you're, if you're planning on going $50,000 in debt before, you're, uh, before you get married, I'm not into that. Oh, See, what we're talking about is Jesus Christ really being Lord. Not, not, not the superficial, nutty stuff. We're out of time. Just believe it or not, this has great bearing on future finances. Uh, do what Jesus said, and you'll have miracles. God bless.